Ciao, buongiorno. Dove siete in qualsiasi momento, wherever you are at this time, a big cheers and an early happy new year to you. Empoli zero, inter uno. Guys, we can finally chill for a little bit, sit back and have a nice look at the rest of the Serie A results as we recap the end of 2018, not only for Inter, but for Inter worldwide. So thank you for tuning in on this lovely day here in Sydney. As you can tell from myself and Bruno's past videos, the sun is shining. It's very nice weather at the moment, and it's a good time to be an Interesti. I feel as though we have definitely broken what has been known as the December curse. I wasn't that confident that it was going to be broken, but I tell you who was a little bit more confident than me, it was our boy Bruno. So let's just have a quick little look at what he's had to say over the past two matches, the Napoli and Empoli fixture. You may have seen his videos, but this is just a quick reminder. I think, you know what? I've got to call it, the curse is broken. We can move on happily. You know what? I'm going to call it. I'm going to agree with you as well, Bruno. December has shown us this season that Inter have sort of somewhat buried the ghosts of last, uh, last season or seasons past or before that. So let's just have a quick look at what has happened in the Serie A this week that's making us feel sort of jubilated or on top of the world. Now, the result against Empoli wasn't a fantastic performance, but did we really expect a vintage Inter performance against a team that sits back heavy like Empoli? Um, speaking to people like Raphael and Angelo from the Inter Club Sydney, they were very, very much uh, cautious about this fixture, saying, you know, it would be very Inter to beat Napoli 1-0 and then go on to possibly lose or draw at Empoli. That wasn't the case this morning as, you know, we were able to get up 1-0. And after looking at some of the other results this morning that happened, Lazio were only able to draw one all with Torino, which has turned into an excellent result for us. Uh, else on the board, we saw some drop points for Sampdoria. What can we say about Juventus, honestly? Like... One of my relatives at Christmas said it very well. If, you're, if they're going to attack, 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 they are going to get the lucky decision after lucky decision. Just simply for the fact that they attack more than anybody else. But this morning's decision was a little bit up in the air again. However, it's probably worked out better for Inter as Sampdoria was starting to creep up around the fifth place position with 29 points. They stay in seventh at the moment on 29, just ahead of Atalanta on 28. Um, check the table below so that you guys are keeping up well. Uh, Milan had themselves a 2-1 win against Spal this morning. Not a great performance, but, you know, Higuain finally back on the money. Um, so that's brought them back up to fifth. But, Ragazzi, the most important thing is, you know, let's ignore that Napoli got the win against Bologna because, you know, the five-point gap for Napoli, it's something that we can still look forward to and break. It's still something we can look, look towards as our goal to finish second. But more importantly, it's about building that cushion. That cushion in third, even fourth. Just making sure we can reach our goal of um, qualifying for the Champions League with minimal issue as possible. We don't want to put the fans under any more strenu strenuousness or stress than they have to go. We're definitely not leaving it till match day 38 to make it to the Champions League, that's for sure. So with the result with Napoli, uh, sorry, with Lazio drawing, they dropped a few more points. They are now officially seven points behind us from third to fourth. Which is a nice cushion going into the winter break. Uh, we've also got the eight-point jump on Milan and the nine-point jump on Roma. So we're sitting seven, eight, nine points ahead of our main rivals this season, which ultimately was the goal. We are showing that we can grind out better results than these teams. Yes, we can consider ourselves a little bit fortunate that these teams are struggling uh, with consistency and complacency, but that's not our problem at the end of the day. We're focusing on ourselves and what we can do on the pitch. Um, in terms of the win against Empoli, the only thing worth mentioning is that it was a pretty dead first half. We started to pick up a little bit in the second half. Keita Balde is the man of the hour once again. Uh, in terms of substitutions, I think Spalletti was on the ball with his substitutions. Could have been a little bit earlier, waiting until the 57th minute to bring in Nangolan for Vecino. A little bit late for me, but you know, it still gave Raja 33 minutes. And when he came on, um, our attack did, a lot, did look a lot more uh, inspiring. The Borja Valero for Lautaro Martinez sub, another good sub from Spalletti. And Martinez, when he gets on the ball, is actually pretty efficient. Uh, he's very, he, you never know what he's going to do. It's unexpected, so that's an advantage for us. Leading 1-0 and bringing on another defender for a forward is very Spalletti-like, but I feared a Kievo 
uh, relapse in this match. So we're very, very lucky we didn't collapse in this match against Empoli. So the three points was sealed there. So with the winter break, ragazzi, as I said, we've got that cushion. And, you know, let us know in the comments below or um, on any of our social media platforms, you know, what you think of us going into the winter break with this sort of lead. Uh, it's a lot more comfortable than we were last season. Sorry, it might not have actually been more comfortable than last season considering where we were on the table last season. Um, but you guys know what I mean. We, we look like we're a lot more efficient at the moment moving forward. In terms of our next fixtures before we move off, for today we play Benevento in the Coppa Italia round of 16 and we'll have a proper preview coming your way with myself and Bruno a little bit closer to then um, 4 a.m. kickoff in Australia I'm looking at fantastic uh, 14th of the first so the 14th of January 4 a.m. kickoff in Sydney it's probably somewhere like 8 or 8 p.m. over in Europe something like that um, we've got to win that match. We've got to get through to the quarterfinals. We've got to be there with the big boys in this competition. You know, the Juves, Napoli's, anybody else who's going to be there. Because, you know, it is a realistic shot at a trophy at the end of the season. And I, for one, I don't really care what it is as long as I can see them lifting that silverware. Um, that, that's pretty much good with me. In terms of the last Serie A fixture, we come up against Sassuolo. And we will cover that match properly for you as well when it comes around. Guys, thank you for tuning in to this short Empoli and cultural wrap up for the end of the season. We will bring you plenty more content coming in 2019. But as of now, we need to ask you a small favor. If you guys have enjoyed us in 2018, because this has been our year into worldwide, this is where we started at the start of this year to bring you guys all this proper content and all this official content, news, videos, whatever it was. We are going to continue all the way into 2019 with this. So please keep showing your support. All the descriptions to all the social media platforms and our website, which is just up and running again properly, are in the background. As always, from 2018 to 2019, from everyone here at Inter Worldwide, Forza Inter. Ciao, ragazzi.